In this lesson, we're going to look at how to integrate a complex function with brackets and the power. Now, to do this, the easiest thing is to look at the derivative. So, when you differentiate a bracket with a power, then we multiply down by the power. We then multiply by the derivative of the bracket, and we also reduce the power by 1. This is the process going along here of what happens when we differentiate. Now we should know that integration is the exact opposite of differentiation or the inverse process. So it would make sense to do things in the opposite way. So to start our integration, we'll start at the finish and go back to the start, but do the opposite processes. So instead of taking a one away from the power, we'll add one to the power. Instead of multiplying by the derivative of the bracket, we will now divide by the derivative of the bracket. And instead of multiplying by the power, we will divide by the power. This being the new power. So let's see how this works in terms of some examples. So here's the formula if you like. Add 1 to the power divide by the derivative of the bracket and also the new power. And also remember to put plus c in unless you're integrating an area. So I've put the rules here at the side. These are the three things you must do. Let's look at it in terms of this integral here. Integrate x plus 2 to the power 4 with respect to x. So I always find the easiest way to do it is to put your x plus 2 at the top and it's really 1x plus 2, and increase the power. What you then do is, underneath, because you're dividing by the new power and the derivative of x here, which is 1, just write 1 times 5 in the bottom. And remember your plus c. So your new power has been put to the bottom, and your derivative of the bracket has been put to the bottom. Simplify that by multiplying 1 by 5. Okay, next example here, integrate 3x take away 5 cubed with respect to x. Same idea, rewrite the bracket and increase the power by 1 first. We'll do that here. Divide by the new power and also the derivative of 3x minus 5, which is 3. And that's in the bottom line, so you're going to get 3 times 4 plus c. So we'll follow these rules here, we've added 1 to the power to get 4, we've divided by the derivative and also by the new power. The bottom line is going to be 12 there. Okay, moving on to a few more complicated examples. So in this integral here, the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of the fraction here, the 1 over. In order to do that, you take the power and the bracket up and make it a negative power. So really what we're having there is... <coughs> The integral of 3x plus 6 to the negative 4 with respect to x. Same as the last example, add 1 to the power. Be careful when you add 1 to negative 4 and don't put negative 5. If you add 1 to negative 4, you get negative 3, so that goes in the top. The derivative of the bracket is going to be 3, because if you differentiate 3x plus 6, you get 3, and new power is negative 3 plus c. Simplify the bottom line, and that will go to negative 9. And I always like to leave these um, expressions in the form where you can substitute a value in. At the moment, you can't substitute a value into x because you've got a negative power. In order to make that a non-negative power, the easiest way to think about it is that this is really negative a ninth here multiplied by 3x plus 6. Excuse my writing with the mouse, obviously, uh, to negative 3. Now you can write that as 1 over 3x plus 6 to, neg uh, to the power of positive 3. So that really goes to the bottom along with the 9. And that would look like this. I'll just rub that out. Okay, so that's your final answer. Try and leave it where you can substitute an x value in. 
Okay, last example here, integrate the square root of 2x plus 1 with respect to x between 0 and 4. 4 is your upper limit, 0 is your lower limit. So we can actually get an answer for this. So first things first, let's get rid of the root, and we should really write that as a half, so as we can integrate this. So we want to integrate this here, and we want to write the power as a half. The square root is the same as a half. I then want to add 1 to the power, so if you add 1 to a half, you get 1 and a half, but we'll write it as a top heavy fraction, 3 over 2. So that goes in the top, and on the bottom you divide by the new power, and also the derivative of the bracket. So the derivative of the bracket here, this bit, is just 2. You differentiate 1, it goes to 0, differentiate 2x, it goes to 2. So 2 in the bottom times 3 over 2 is just 3. 3 over 2 times 2 is just 3 in the bottom there. You could write that out, but I've just simplified it to 3 straight away. Now before I substitute these values in, the mistake people make is they start putting a 4 in here when I've got a 3 over 2. Get that into a root and a power. Now the bottom number here is your root. So we're really saying this is the square root of all of that cubed. So that's the way I'm going to write it, the square root of all of that cubed, all over 3. I'm now going to put my 4 in, and then I'm going to substitute the 0 in. So if I put the 4 into this, I'm doing 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. If I square root 9, I get 3. So it's really 3 cubed over 3, which is 9. And if I put 0 in here, I get 0 plus 1, which is 1. If I square root that and cube it, I get 1 still, so take away a third. Now, just for space, I've done this very quickly. I'm, in a written paper, I would substitute the 4 in here and sort it all out, and then I would substitute the 0 in and show that line of working. So 9 take away a third is 8 and 2 thirds, and that's your final answer.